Join us as we track the development of children from birth to the school gate. The journey from naught to five. <laughs> so much happens in the first few months of a baby's life. They go from little bundles who sleep and suckle all day to alert individuals, aware of everything that's going on around them. There are many milestones in the stage, from baby's first smile to when they pull themselves up on all fours to crawl. Five-month-old Willow and four-month-old Manawa are our babies in the early months. They need to experience attachment to at least one person, which is Lauren's area of specialisation. She's going to talk to our two families. On the physical front, it's all go as babies learn to roll from back to tummy and back again. Tummy time strengthens upper body muscles in preparation for crawling. Teething is underway, which probably means a few broken nights. And around six months, most babies will start solids. This is Glenn, a project manager. He immigrated with Renata from South Africa four years ago. She's a makeup artist. Kato is 22 months old, and this, of course, is Willow, the latest addition to our first family. Baby Willow was born three weeks premature. She was settled and happy for the first couple of weeks. But then all of a sudden she just started crying a lot and being very difficult to settle, um, wriggling, like she almost seemed as if she was uncomfortable in her own skin. Mm. And um, just screaming during feeds and little legs coming up. It was very different from how it had been with Kato. He was such a good little boy and she was one of those little needy yeah. Needed more, a lot more, you know. Yeah. I think the difficult part was not being able to assess what, you know, what was wrong with her. What was wrong with her, yeah. Four months later, after many visits to doctors and all sorts of alternative remedies, Willow was diagnosed with silent reflux. She now takes medication three times a day. She's a lot more settled now, but she still loves to be held. Sometimes during the day I feel like I need to clone myself because I've got her on the hip, I have to go make her a bottle and I've got Kato pulling me this way and, you know, there's just so much to do. You actually know that she's um, being naughty. Yeah. Because <laughs> the minute you take her down and you put her into a room, she'll all of a sudden start sort of tensing up when you're going to put her down because she knows what's happening. She actually knows what's going on. Yeah. And she's, I think it might be a little bit of a spoiled thing that's... You know, because she cried so much as a baby, I did hold her a lot. A lot, yeah. Um, and unfortunately, it has created the situation now where... So, interestingly, in my view, what you've created is an excellent thing. Oh. Um, from a brain development perspective, when a baby is born, they still have 70% of their brain to grow. And all of that brain development is based on the relationships in their life. So the fact that she is um, clingy and needy is actually a sign that she's very related. She's very interested in you and in you and in probably in her brother as well. And that's actually a good thing. Okay. Because that's where all the learning takes place. And Lauren wants to know more about why Renata and Glenn think Willow's clinginess means she's being naughty. I suppose it's just from other people uh, in the past, you know, so it's yeah. like one of those things that just come through the generations. Right. Because we both had our mothers here for a while. Yeah. And it could have been from them. Yeah. yeah. Saying, yeah. oh, no, she's getting spoiled. Or, you know, in those yeah. days we did the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> What data about babies shows is that babies really aren't capable of manipulation, okay? So they're very honest creatures. Like, okay. she can't lie to you, she can't fake how she feels. So that reaction upon separation is a real one for okay, her. Okay, okay. Look at how old she is. Yeah. I mean, do you see any other signs that she'd be capable of sort of manipulating? No. That really reassures me because then, yeah. Her needs are real. Yes, you know, her, her needs, needs are, are real. real yeah. And by teaching her that you're there for her, then she actually grows a sense in herself of being a secure person, mm -hmm. which she then builds on later. To help Renata meet Willow's needs as well as her own, Laura has some suggestions. One possible idea is just to try and include the baby as much as possible in whatever you're doing, using a front pack or a bouncy seat. So that means if you're peeling carrots for dinner, you know, hand her a carrot to hold or give her a spoon if you're stirring. Look, you've got yours too, just like me. 
Another idea is to invite a friend over to your house who has a small child. Oh, look, hold her hand. That's really nice. While the friend plays with the children, you can clean, make dinner, send emails, or whatever that agenda item is that you really have to get done. Next time, swap houses, and you can do the same for her. Lastly, it's really important to remember that you need to have realistic expectations. Yes, dinner must be made, but it doesn't have to be elaborate. And it's okay if you can't get to that DIY project until your child is older, because some things just need to wait. Willow sleeps eight to ten hours during the night without waking, but getting her off to sleep is a drama. She'll roll over to her side, then she'll roll over to her back, then she'll roll over to her tummy, and sometimes we've got to do the dummy run about... Oh, for about half an hour. Hmm. Just constantly going, put the dummy in, put Every the dummy in. Every few minutes. Until babies get to be about four to six months old, they actually have a hard time controlling their limbs mm -hmm. and, and physically sort of settling. This is why wrapping is popular, but it doesn't work for Willow, who prefers to sleep on her tummy. Does she rock off to sleep? I mean, will she... I've never tried that. I've never... Um, she's fallen asleep in my arms sometimes, yeah. but I've never tried the rocking, just because... Yeah, you, then you I worry. don't want to always have to right, rock her to right. sleep, yeah. <laughs> Which is always the fear. I think that's why people don't try some of the more nurturing things, Absolutely. because they think, well then, you know, it's gonna... the proverbial rod for your back, right? Yeah. There are a variety of ways babies can be rocked off to sleep. In your arms, in a pram, or in a front pack. Lauren doesn't advocate a controlled crying program for babies under 12 months, but letting them fuss at the stage is OK. The fussing their bodies can kind of handle and the low-level crying, but you don't want it to go beyond that because then actually you are creating all sorts of hormones and, and stress chemicals in her brain that you don't want her to be exposed to. Sure. I mean, technically, the medical definition of sleeping through the night Five hours. Wow. Oh, so when really? you read the statistics about babies that sleep through the night, that's the research oh, definition. Okay. And what's interesting also about the data about sleep is that there is no such thing as sleeping through the night. If you go into these sleep labs where they have the cameras on the babies, all babies wake at night. Mm -hmm. All of them. In fact, all adults do. Mm -hmm. It's just that some babies are able to put themselves back to sleep and some aren't. Mm -hmm. So she's probably actually waking in that eight hour stretch because she will, a baby's sleep cycle is only about 50 minutes long. So she's actually probably having several wakings where she is able to settle back herself again. back. Wow, well, that's good, good to know. know. It's fun. Renata and Glenn are finally getting their lives back in shape. Kato has just started going to Bernardo's Kid Start three mornings a week just to take a step back and spend yeah. some quality time with her. Right. And just to come home and sleep if I need to sleep, if she's sleeping. Right. Um, and just become normal again, eh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, have a sense of normality, absolutely. Yeah. It's exhausting. That's right. It is exhausting. It and is just to start talking about it, yeah. you know, yeah, communicating yeah. And, and, and becoming more aware. Mm. And let people know that it's not a bad thing to <laughs> say that it's a difficult job, you know? Yeah. I mean, well, we all love our yes. children, yeah. but it is very challenging at times. <laughs> I love listening to your voice and the sounds around me, and I'm making my own sounds for you to hear. Did you know when you speak slowly to me and in a higher voice, I hear you better? This is Marama, who's an educator for the Human Rights Commission. Her 11-year-old daughter, Hiria, and four-month-old son, Manawa. Across town is Paul, a manager for a chain of retail stores. His nine-year-old daughter, Annalisa, and son, Manoa. Marama and Paul are separated. The girls are from previous relationships, but they co-parent all three children. With both parents working full-time, sleeping during the night is their biggest issue. Hello, Manoa. <laughs> Hi. He might have a nice um, five-hour sleep from, say, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, but then after that it tends to be every two hours, or if I'm lucky, but could possibly be every hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he just seems to do that no matter where he is, whether he's at my house or at his dad's house. What happens with all people and babies as well, but baby's sleep cycle is shorter, mm -hmm. is that we cycle through deep sleep and then into the light sleep, which is the REM sleep, the dream sleep, and then we cycle back into the deep sleep. Babies have two challenges to sleep that we don't have. One is they spend more time in the REM sleep, so that's the lighter sleep. Yeah. The other challenge is that they've got a shorter sleep cycle in total, so they have more opportunities every night to come through light sleep and be easier to arouse. 
Marama and Paul were not aware that during the five-hour stretch Manua has at the beginning of the night, he will be waking and putting himself back to sleep. So your yeah. son's already yeah. showing that ability, yeah. which is excellent. Yeah. The only immediate practical yeah. suggestion that you could try, if you're comfortable with it, is to have him in the bed with you. Mm -hmm. Some studies show that babies will actually resettle on their own quicker and without fuss in the company of their parent. Mm -hmm. Lauren suggests co-sleeping works well when baby is in the bed all night. Because parents need to be asleep when baby wakes, so that baby can pattern off parental breathing and put themselves back to sleep. I see, so, so putting them in the bed is fine. Like, I've always had a bit of a, uh, a yeah. thing about putting a baby about in with the safety. bed. About with safety, yeah. Yeah, especially if you're really tired and I sometimes get, I have that fear, um, falling asleep maybe sure. and forgetting your environment sometimes. I'll, I've had put my son in bed with me. Yeah. And I uh, just, that whole scary Makes you nervous. Thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bit. I can tell you what the data and the research say. Now, you, Paul, are going to be outside of the data because most of this research is done on mothers and babies. Yes. Yeah. But you can extrapolate for your situation what feels comfortable for you. For breastfed babies, they are actually, in research terms, more safe sleeping in the bed with their parents than they are in a cot because the rate of SIDS of cot death almost disappears when a breastfed baby sleeps next to its mother. Co-sleeping can only occur safely if parents are not under the influence of alcohol or drugs, even if they are prescription. Other risks for co-sleeping are smoking, particularly for mothers who smoke during pregnancy, and obesity. The mattress has to be firm with no gaps between it and the wall, and babies shouldn't sleep on a pillow. With co-sleeping often comes a criticism that once you get your baby in the bed, you'll never get them out of the mm -hmm. bed. Mm -hmm. that, that's, yeah. that's usually what's leveled at parents who co-sleep. I can hear my mother's voice sometimes. So yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. There is no evidence to any of that. Most of that comes from this culturally determined sense that babies need to have their independence encouraged yeah. and f almost forced upon them. And what's true about children is they blossom into their independence when they're well-rooted in their security. I mean, you can have them in your bed for the next two months or the next two years. It really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's what works for your family. Okay. Okay. Manoa is fully breastfed. Paul has bottles of breast milk in his freezer, which he heats up. At work, I have a double electric um, breast pump, and my work are really good. They give me a private place to go and do that, so I try and do that every two or three hours. Um, and because I'm so busy and, and often I'm out in the community a lot, um, I also have a single electric breast pump which I take with me in the car and sometimes um, make use of the driving time in Auckland traffic and stick it on while I'm driving and um, get to the lights and change sides and by the time I'm at my next meeting it's all done. Lauren suggests Manua might be waking in the night for the comfort of a feed, and they could try resettling him without one. But if Manua doesn't settle happily, he should be comforted, because leaving him to cry at this age will only make things worse. One of the things that I've thought and have heard from friends and family um, that might help with sleeping is um, to start putting them on solids, but um, that's going against my sort of medical advice and plunket advice that I've been given is not to start him yet, but I, it's easy to feel tempted to mm. start feeding him in the hope that he'll be right. so full he'll <laughs> sleep for 12 hours. Yeah. <laughs> There is the medical advice now, which has basically shifted to the six-month mark, yeah. and that's based on the research that shows that babies who wait at least six months to get on solids have fewer allergies, uh -huh. and their digestive system has a chance to mature enough to get solids. I mean, what you're doing now is, is the perfect thing. He's getting breast milk and only breast milk, mm -hmm. which is optimal for his body and is helping him to develop the gut that he needs to break down solid foods. But despite the trials of the early months, Manoa is a much-loved child. The, the key to not just the parenting, but, but our whole family life, being good communicators with each other, and that, that really is the key to sorting out anything. We're both on the same page with what you know, we want our kids to do. 
kids to develop. We want them to um, be in a um, in a, a good yeah. environment where they're going to grow healthy and strong and right. um, good values and, and all of that thing. That, that, that none of that's changed just because um, we're no longer a couple. Right. Um, we still hold on to those values as a family unit when we were all together. It's exactly the same except um, maybe I'm just not around as much. Yeah, I think, in fact, it's an excellent model for parents, whether they're in the same home or not. Mm, yeah. I mean, yours is exemplified, and it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's more intense because you are apart. Yeah. Yeah. But it's probably the perfect model, even if you share the same home, yeah, yeah. the communication and shared philosophy and flexibility. Yeah. 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 Squares of at least five different fabrics sewn together is a wonderful toy for babies of this age. You can sew it lengthwise too and stuff it to make a snake. With Velcro at either end, it can hang on a baby's bassinet. Or around a car seat or push chair. And little fingers can fidget for hours. Around teething time, a little friend made from a wooden spoon is a good idea. Most felt pens will smudge, so we used a ballpoint pen to make the face. I'm developing faster now than I will ever do again in the rest of my life. You need to be prepared for a major change every six months. Active movement, making the connection between movement and learning to develop the whole child. Moving is baby's language and, and when I move I learn all about my environment and my world and all about myself. Once I start moving across the floor I start learning about how big I am and how wide I am and do I fit through a space and learning about things like um, height and crawling over things and learning how, how far down I have to move. There's so much to be learned when babies start to move on the floor. In order for babies to get moving they need plenty of tummy time. So I want to show you some things that we can do with babies to um, help promote tummy time. Okay. And uh, so we're going to put Willow on her tummy to start with and just have a look at her wonderful um, muscle tone that she has. They push up on their hands, they lift up their head, you get wonderful eye development. Um, everything starts to happen. The push away reflex babies use during birth is something you can stimulate to help them get moving. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually just holding Willow's feet. I'm not pushing at all, but I'm giving her something to push against. Mm -hmm. And so what she's doing is she sees that little toy over there and she thinks, I want to get that. So she, what she's doing is, see how, oh, how she's yeah. pushing really strongly? And what that's doing is that's actually giving her the idea that I can move forwards. Yeah. And what happens if babies aren't put on their tummies when they're awake is that often they lose that reflex. There are lots of fun and beneficial things you can do with little ones at nappy changing time. One of the first milestones is rolling, and this exercise helps babies achieve that. See how I'm holding one leg down here like this? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to move her like that. And see how I'm lifting her leg really high? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very cool, don't you? We're going to do it the other way now, Willow. Are you ready? Roll. Everybody's rolling. <laughs> there we go. She's going to go right over. Oh, good girl. That's very clever. Over we go. Shall we roll back again? We'll over here. Ready? Arm up. And over we go. It's a really good activity just to do two or three times when you're nappy changing. Okay. And the other thing that's really important is we want to develop upper body strength so that these babies, when they do start to crawl in nice and strong, mm -hmm. so just do a few pull-ups. Right, you're going to really be going to go up, 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 up. <laughs> down, 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 down. Good. Now see how she's pulling her. So see, I'm, yeah. I'm actually not doing any of the work myself. She's co-contracting her muscles, and she's pulling herself up. That's what we want. If your baby does have a head leg, uh -huh. which means I drop my head back, then please support the head. Okay. okay, it's very important to support the head when you pull baby up if they've got a head leg and down again. Mm -hmm. Also at every changing time you can just do a little bit of massage. I'm going to go from your shoulder, down your tummy, across your hip, down your knee, and to your toes. And even though she doesn't understand that those are, that's what, what her body is, she's learning the language about my body. Okay. Down your hips and down your knees. <laughs> 
And do your toes. <laughs> <laughs> good, isn't it? A scooter board is a great way of distracting baby while she's having tummy time. Now what we're also doing is we're helping, we're spinning her around and we're moving her around and that's helping to develop what we call her vestibular system or her balance system. Mm -hmm. Rolling on top of a beach ball or Swiss ball has the same benefits. But even for Glenn, you know, um, tummy time doesn't have to be doing activities like this. When he's lying watching TV at night, if he's lying on the couch, mm -hmm. he can lie with Willow on his tummy. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's getting tummy time that way. Okay. And for a lot of babies, that's a really comforting thing because they're very close to, to human skin and yeah. they can feel the heartbeat and yeah. it's a quite a, a soothing thing to do as yeah. well. Yeah, she does like that does actually. She, yeah, she does, she does yeah. That. yeah. Putting baby on your lap is another good tummy time exercise. Other good exercises to stimulate the vestibular system are gently holding baby upside down and flying her tummy down around the room. These are the things, if you just support under the chest and between her legs like that, and just move her up and down like that. Hello. Now we're developing vestibular. Balance. Okay. And we're also, see there's upside down time. And she's moving very slowly. It's important that you do all these activities really slowly. Okay. Because otherwise you'll frighten her. Yeah. And it's important not to shake babies. Yes. So just gentle like that. And if you put some nice relaxing music on, she's going to enjoy that. Uh -huh. The more confident you become doing those kinds of activities with her, the more she'll respond because she'll feel it through your muscles how confident you are. So okay. it's really important to just kind of relax and know that as long as you've got a firm hold uh -huh. on her, you're not going to drop her, she's going to really enjoy these kinds of things. Babies start off and their brains are very little and by the time they're adults they grow to four times the size they are when wow. they're little people. So there's a lot of learning to be done. Okay. And when they're little like this is the prime time to do it. Uh -huh. I think as mothers we're very good at touching and, and, yes. and stroking and nurturing but um, it's good that you've given me some ideas on how to get more interactive with her because sure. normally it's just on her tummy yeah. or it's on her back with the activity gym mm -hmm. um, on top of her. Yes. So now at least we've got some exercises that we can do um, that makes, yeah, makes us spend more time together too right. which is really good. Next time, we're off. There's no time to waste for our babies on the move. Remember, there are six key things kids need from parents. For more on these principles, this programme and links to other sites, go to homegrowntv.co.nz. Not to Five has been produced in association with Bernardo's and Spark, Sport and Recreation New Zealand. It does not replace advice from your healthcare professional.